what are you done with? The old ways, the old habits, the old patterns of thinking, the old mindsets, the former way of living. It's not necessarily what needs to go, but instead, what areas do I need to grow? Let me say that again. It's not necessarily what needs to go in my life, but what areas do I need to grow in in my life? What do you want to start implementing in your life? What do you want to start or implement in your life? Eat clean, work out more, drink more water, read a book, learn to dance. Anyone remember that song, The Hokey Pokey? Come on at home. You remember that Hokey Pokey? Kids, Christ Chapel kids, come on now. You remember the Hokey Pokey? If not, this would be a good time for mom and dad to teach you, to teach you the hokey pokey in your living room now wherever you're watching from you might even be at a coffee shop stand up with me and let's do the hokey pokey you remember it you put your right hand in you put your right hand out you put your right hand in and you shake it all about you do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself around that's what it's all about right but then what happens you keep doing this until you put your whole self in right put your whole self in Let's take a look in, at Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. I'm going to kind of read this from three different translations. The first one is J.B. Phillips. Before we go to Romans chapter 12, let's pray. Father, we come before you now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for our time together as a church family. We thank you, Lord, right now for your goodness and for your grace. Holy Spirit, we ask right now that you would fill and flood every space that's been created for you at home right now. So we thank you for it, Lord. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercy. I thank you, Lord, that each one today will be encouraged, that they'll be filled with hope and filled with faith. So we thank you for it, Father, in Jesus' name. And all my CC family said, amen, amen. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. This is week three of a series called, I'm done with it. I'm done with it. It. And I know we've gone two prior weeks, but in the comment section, let us know what are you done with right now? What are you done with right now in, in 2020 going into 2021? Here we are. It's going to be, we're believing in God for a great year. Romans chapter 12, 1 and 2 from the J.B. Phillips translation. With eyes wide open to the mercies of God, I beg you, my brothers, as an act of intelligent worship, to give him your bodies as a living sacrifice, consecrated to him, acceptable by him. Don't let the world around you squeeze you into its own mold. But let God remold your minds from within so that you may prove and practice that the plan of God for you is good meets all his demands and moves towards the goal of true maturity. Because that's the goal, right? To be a mature believer, not to be a baby drinking milk all day long. Come on, somebody. But to be a mature believer. It's that same passage, Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, from the Passion Translation. So get your notebooks out, write down, take notes on your phone, whatever you might need to do, but check this out out of this translation. Beloved friends, what should be our proper response to God's marvelous mercies? I encourage you to surrender yourselves to God to be his sacred living sacrifices and live in holiness, experiencing all that delights his heart. For this becomes your genuine expression of worship. Stop imitating the ideals and opinions of the culture around you but be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through tro total reformation of how you think. This will empower you to discern God's will as you live a beautiful life, satisfying and perfect in his eyes. I love that. And I got one more for you, CC family. Romans chapter 12, 1 and 2. It's the modern English version. I urge you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service of worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and the perfect 
will of God. See, chapter 12 begins the last major section in the book of Romans. What Paul has in mind now is simply this, <clears throat> is to take the theology taught so far and make it applicable to the members of the church of Rome, but also to us here today in 2021. The Bible must change us individually, and the ultimate end is to change us corporately as a church family, as the church, the body of Christ universally. Romans and the rest of the New Testament is ultimately for the maturity of God's people in the setting of the church. So to think that one can grow as a Christian outside the actual environment of the church can sometimes be a major understanding. Spiritual maturity is developed through the discipleship and community and connectivity of the local church. You can grow at home on your own, but you will grow so much more gathering around people of like-minded, like-hearted faith. You can read your Bible at home, but I'm better when I'm surrounded by people because people challenge my faith. They can challenge the way I think. They can encourage me, and they can move me forward with the plan of God for my life. Is that someone once said, show me your five closest friends, and I'll show you your future. So I want to encourage you is that when we come together as a church family, as a community, what God can do here with the spirit of faith and the spirit of truth and the Holy Spirit working in us together, wow, what tremendous power can be made available to us as a community, as a family of believers. But check this out. It's our individual pursuit of the things of God at home and as we gather at church, at home and as we gather at church, growing in your relationship with God, wait for it, it's all about transformation, all about transformation. And the first step in transformation, if you're a note taker, present your bodies. What does this mean? Like wrap it up in a present and like, hey, here I am, God. No, it actually means that when you get together to worship God, when you're doing church at home or when we're doing church in person, you know what it's about? It's about showing up, showing up with your heart, 100% of your heart. It's showing up with your body, with your mind, with your hands as you worship God. When you come to worship God, don't take it for granted. You're coming together and you're worshiping. We're worshiping the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. It's a powerful time. No longer take those things for granted because how many months were we social distancing and physical distancing and staying at home? Remember 2020? I'm done with it. Well, but 2021, as we come together corporately and we're connected together in heart and in spirit as the body of Christ, as this local body, our Christ Chapel family, oh, I'm coming together. I'm all in. I'm going to show up. How many at home you're with me, you're going to show up in 2021? Come on now. Show up. Take notes. Be ready to worship. Be ready to participate. Ways to participate. Engage with us right now in the chat section, in the comment section. Pray. Invite someone that needs to be encouraged. Share this message online with someone that needs to hear it. Start a watch party. Be a leader. Start a watch party right where you're at. Give of yourself, offer up, and also as we gather at 5 p.m. on Sunday evenings right here at Oasis Community Church, come and gather with us. Gather with us. But also, on top of all that, make time to read your Bible. Pray. And then most importantly, don't be in a rush. Allow time for the Holy Spirit to speak to your heart. Say, Holy Spirit, you lead and guide me today. Lead me in my journey today and watch what he does. But listen for the voice of the Holy Spirit every day. The second point is being a living sacrifice, living sacrifices. We live in a culture where we measure life by what's in it for me. What's in it for me? As living sacrifices, it doesn't refer to death where you stop breathing, your heart stops pumping blood. No, it means that you die to your fleshly 
desires. Come on, somebody. 21 days of prayer and fasting. We're in it to win it now. We're in it to win it. And here it is, is that we're dying to some to some fleshly desires. I'm saying no to some food, some food that I really, really like in my life right now. I'm saying no to it. And what am I doing? I'm taking extra time to seek God, to pray, to worship Jesus like never before. And as I do, I know this is that I'm, I'm going to receive the direction that I need. And I want to challenge you at home. Is that what direction do you need in your life? What do you believe in God for in 2021? What answers do you specifically need in this season of prayer and fasting? Watch what God will do when you're engaged 100%, when you show up, when you present your body as a living sacrifice, when you die to your fleshly desires, when you put everything else aside and say, God, it's just me and you. I want your presence like never before. I'm pursuing you like never before. Make time to worship Jesus. Jesus doesn't need to be on your list. He needs to be the center of your life. Jesus doesn't need to be on your list. All my type A, my list makers, take that off your list. Jesus doesn't need to be on your list. He needs to be the center of your life. Come on, somebody at home. Can I get an amen in the comment section? Come on now. Center of your life. So as we grow in our relationship with God, there shouldn't be a difference in our heart. As we grow in our relationship with God, there should be a difference in our heart, which then becomes a visible change in our speech, the way I talk, in my actions, and with my attitude. May I add something else? And on my social media. And on my social media. It's an act of obedience more than an attitude of what's in it for me. But I have to be honest with you, that's a great question. What's in it for me? What's in it for you? Obedience to God brings blessings in your life. Obedience to God brings blessings in your life. The third point today is simply this. Don't be conformed to this world or to the pattern of this world. Stop imitating the ideals and the opinions of the culture around you. Come on now. Instead, you know what we're called to do as followers of Jesus? We are called to lead the culture, but not follow the patterns of this world. Come on now, lead the culture, don't follow the patterns of this world, but be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit. There's a lot of things that you could be transformed by. But being transformed by the Holy Spirit, you know what that means? That's simply this, is that I read the word and I take a minute and I let it soak. I meditate on it. I say, Holy Spirit, speak to me. And watch how God shows you. The Bible says this, is that we can rejoice for the steps of a righteous man and woman. They're ordered by God. So believe God today that your steps are are ordered, that your steps are ordered. So be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit. I like how specific this verse is. It says, be transformed inwardly, inwardly. Today, there are so many ways that we can enhance our appearance. Come on, you know what I'm talking about. There's Botox, there's lipo, there's implants, there's hair and nail extensions, there's makeup, there's waxing, there's gels, there's creams, and baby, there are screams. Come on now. So on top of that, how we dress and what we drive, and the young people say, check out my drip. Check out my drip. Come on, somebody. It's talking about you being transformed inwardly, the real you, not what you want people to think you are or who people to think that you are. No, the real you on the inside, the new that only you and God know and maybe a, a handful of people. It's talking about you, the real you. Transformation is a process and it doesn't happen overnight. Come on now. So how does it happen? The fourth point today is, is you renew your mind. How do you renew your mind? That transformational process is renewing your mind, but how do you renew your mind? I'm so glad you asked at home. 
Number one is ask the Lord to guide and to direct your mind. My mind is a place of my intellect, reasoning, and my intentions. My behavior begins in my mind, and my mind is where spiritual transformation takes place. Romans 12, 2, write that down. The object of my regular thinking will be determined by how many days, years, and ultimately my life plays out. Everything in life starts with my mind, how I think. The second point is recognize the source of self-focused and self-defeating thoughts. Recognize the source of self-focused and self-defeating thoughts. Thoughts that doesn't come from God, that either comes from a, a, a poor image, a poor self image, or it comes from your enemy, the devil. But given that my behavior begins in my mind, and my mind is where spiritual transformation happens, is it any surprise that the adversary wants to mess with my mind, mess with my thinking? It must be his favorite first attempt to distract and disarm Christians, and it actually works. Recognize the enemy and fight him with God's power and with the scriptural truth. That he who began a good work is faithful, able, and just to complete it. You're in process. Come on, somebody say that at home with me right now. I'm not perfect, but I'm in process. And I'm in process, and I'm going somewhere. Is that I'm not going to be the same person that I was yesterday. Oh, but today is a new day and I'm on track. So I turn my back to my past and I move forward with the prize and the prize of the high calling of Jesus, a fully devoted, mature follower of Jesus. That's where I'm going. So recognize the enemy and fight him with God's power and with the scripture. The third thing is replace self-focused thinking with a God-focused mindset. After praying for the Lord to protect my mind and recognizing the enemy, I have a choice. I have a choice to make. Will I train my brain to concentrate on the things of God, <clears throat> or will I let it be consumed by the things of this world and the things that I hear and see and that go on all around me? To focus my mind on God requires some work, some effort on my part. If I don't take purposeful action to set my mind on Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of my faith, the author and finisher of your faith, come on now, then I'm allowing my mind to go anywhere that it wants to go. And we can't do that. The Bible says that we are to take, to, we are to take every thought captive in the mighty name of Jesus. So I know where it will go if I let my mind wander aimlessly. And it's nowhere good, right? Come on, somebody. The following verse helps me to set my mind on things above and not on earthly things. It's Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. So I want to encourage you. Set your minds on things that are above, not the things that are on this earth. Our time, our experience, our journey on this earth is so limited. Every day is a day closer to eternity. Set your mind on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. Romans chapter 8 <clears throat> verse 5 reads like this. Those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on things of the Spirit. Let me be bold and blunt. Your choice. Set your, thing, set your mind on things of the flesh or set your mind on things of the Spirit. Choice is yours. Whatever you choose will be what you have. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Finally, brothers... Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think on these things. Think about these things. I read a book over 10, 12 years ago now by Wayne Cordero titled The Divine Mentor. The Divine Mentor. I want to encourage you, if you haven't read that book, pick it up. 
what he did was he shared a really practical approach to reading the Bible, and it's called SOAP, S-O-A-P. And it stands for Scripture, Observation, Application, and then Prayer. It's a great way to get more out of your Bible reading time and your plan. It allows you to record your thoughts and emotions about the revelation you receive from the Word of God. So here's how to get started. is set, a, set aside a time and a place. Find a quiet time and space to read your Bible, preferably at the same time every day. Form that habit. Form that pattern. Many people find that reading Scripture in the morning helps them set the course of their day, helps their day to get off to a focused and fresh start. Number two is what to read. You can follow a Bible reading plan if that's what you want to do. If your goal is to read the Bible, maybe you've never read the Bible in a year, maybe you want to do that. Maybe it's the Old Testament. Maybe it's the New Testament. Maybe, I mean, whatever. You decide. The one-year Bible is great. Whatever you want to do, I usually like to track with the one-year Bible, and I like to always read Proverbs and Psalms and the Ephesians multiple times through year. I just kind of keep rotating and reading through them, and that's a great way to start. But maybe you just made a decision to receive Jesus a few weeks ago or not too long ago. I always start off in, in the Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, New Testament. Start reading that and then work your way on through the New Testament. And the third thing is use a journal. You can use a paper journal. You can record it in, in, your, in your phone or on your device, um, however you want to do that. But journal. Journal as you write what thoughts and what the Holy Spirit is speaking to you. So, so soap is scripture. Read slowly and thoughtfully through a portion of Scripture. Pick a verse or two that stood out to you and then write it in your journal. Write down what it's saying to you. Observation. Now write some observations about the verse or the passage. What is the passage or what is the verse saying to you? What does it teach about God, about people, and how is Christ revealed in that verse? Application. Now write a few sentences on how this passage applies to your life. Maybe there's a truth that you're not applying to your life that you can see about the nature and the character of God. Write it down and how you can apply that to your life. Is the Holy Spirit convicting you of something that you need to do or change in your life as you read it in the light of God's truth? Write those things down. And then the fourth thing is prayer. Take some time before you begin your work day or whatever you've got going on after your devotion time and pray and ask God to help you. God, help me. Jesus, I'm so thankful that you died on a cross for me. Help me to live a life. Help me to grow in my relationship with you. Help me to become a mature disciple, a mature follower of you. Lead me in what I read and how I pray. Lead me in my relationships. Help me not to post anything on social media that, uh, that will offend somebody. Help me to walk in your love always. In Jesus' name, amen. So that's a real practical way to go through your reading your Bible. It's soap, it's scripture, observation, application, and prayer. So I want to encourage you. If you, have, if you want a Bible reading plan, you know, one-year Bible, there's different, if you actually open up the Bible tab app, what you can do is there's different reading plans. Pick a reading plan. Pick something that works for you. I actually like to, um, I've done reading a Bible on, on device, but what I actually like to do is I like to read a Bible, an actual paper book Bible where I can turn the pages, I can highlight, and I don't have to worry about a device or technology. I have several Bibles that I read, and that's what I go through in my life. But you know, thank you for tuning in today. Week three, I'm done with it. Figure out what you need to be done with in your life. Pray about it. Seek God like never before. Find out what you need to have a funeral for in your life. Put those things, the dead things aside. But then, God, what do I need to be awakened to on the inside? How can I grow in my relationship with you? What do you want to show me for this year? And trust God that he will show you. Thank you for tuning in today. We never like to leave our time together without giving you an opportunity to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I want to encourage you right now as you listen to this is that God loves you so much that he sent Jesus to die on a cross for you. 
sent Jesus from heaven to come to this earth to live life 33 sinless years to die on a cross just for you so that we can have right relationships so that you can have right relationship so I can have right relationship with God the Father so I can live a life on this earth not being tormented by fear or anxiety or condemnation or trying to live a fulfilled life no but I can find my purpose that I can come to into a relationship with the Creator God Almighty through Jesus the Son I can be forgiven of my sin and I can have right relationship and I can live a fulfilled life and I can live in my purpose and do what God has called me to do so I don't know maybe you at home maybe you've never asked Jesus to be your Lord and Savior I want to encourage you with this eternity is closer and closer every day there's gonna come a time where you breathe your last on this earth and for some it's gonna be sooner than later and I want to encourage you in this is think about this when you breathe your last you will go to one of two places there is a heaven and there is a hell and heaven is is not filled with with good people so you've lived a good life congratulations I believe in living a good life but what allows you access and entrance into heaven I have to be honest with you is this good people don't go to heaven forgiven people do so you can be as good as you can possibly be but that still won't get you to heaven forgiven people go to heaven would you pray your prayer with me would you ask Jesus to be your Lord and Savior and to forgive you of your sin so that you can begin a relationship with God let's pray repeat this after me dear Jesus I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died on the cross just for me. I ask you to forgive me, to cleanse me of all of my sin. I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Congratulations. Welcome to the family of God. We celebrate this huge decision that you just made. I want to give you some next steps here is that I want to encourage you let us know in the comments that hey I received Jesus today I prayed that prayer we want to put some resources in your hand we want to encourage you in your walk with the Lord I want to encourage you download the Bible app on your device or get a Bible the Bible is broken up into two sections Old Testament and New Testament I want to encourage you start reading the Bible the New Testament it's the fourth book in Matthew Mark Luke it's the Gospel of John and it really talks about how much God loves you. So God loves you. His nature and his character towards you is that he's, he's always pursuing you. He loves you and he wants the best for you. So I want to encourage you to start reading there. Tell someone you received Jesus or you pray that prayer today. And I want to encourage you right here. Welcome home. Welcome to the Christ Chapel family. If you're local, I want to encourage you is that gather with us on Sunday mornings, 1030 a.m., is that we have a, a live stream um, we go we have a, a broadcast a message that will encourage you I want to encourage you is that Sunday evenings at 5 p.m. at Oasis Community Church 607 Avalon Road in Winter Garden is that we meet here in person we have services we're spiritual and responsible and I want to encourage you come on out be part of our family there's one rule that we have around here is that there's always room for one more so welcome home we welcome you with arms wide open welcome to the Christ Chapel family we can't wait to meet you can't wait to shake your hand and give you an air high five whatever you feel comfortable with but we want to encourage you in your walk with God so thank you for tuning in today God bless you at this time we're gonna give you an opportunity if you call Christ Chapel home we want to encourage you and give you an opportunity to worship God with your tithes and with your offerings right now on the screen there are several ways to give and we thank you for your continued faithfulness um, in your giving and as you're worshiping the Lord one encourages that hey uh, we're planting a local church here in the Winter Garden Windermere um, area thank you for partnering with us and that we're believing God as we continue to be 
uh, an influence for Jesus in our community through feeding people and things of that nature. Thank you for partnering with us. And we believe that our best days are just out ahead of us. I want to encourage you is that as you have your personal prayer time, believe God for increase financially this year. So maybe there are some, maybe you'd like to have a better job or maybe a raise or maybe there's others that are, you're renting a home and you'd like to purchase a home. I want to encourage is that believe God as you tithe, as you give of offerings, believe God for increase this year, for divine opportunities. And we'll be in agreement with you that God will lead you every step of the way and you'll have the provision you need to do what's in your heart to do. I want to encourage you. We're in a season of 21 days of prayer and fasting. I want to encourage you is that definitely track along this journey with us. Is that online, on social media, and we'll have different times and different things posted. So engage with us as we pray together corporately. And I want to encourage you. It's going to be an awesome time as we gather, as we pray. So we're believing, God, that in this season, that the answers that you need, that you're seeking God for, write them down in your journal. And watch what God does. Watch how faithful he is to answer your prayer. We're also seeking time in the, you know, in the season of prayer and fasting. And putting time aside for to fast and pray for our nation. And uh, to believe God for the best days. To believe God for healing and restoration for our nation. So track and journey with us. We love you. Thank you for your faithfulness and giving. And thank you for tracking with us and on this journey of 21 days of prayer and fasting. And that we look forward to seeing you Sunday night at 5 p.m. as we gather in person. We love you. Have a great week. God bless you.